People of this stature and commitment are coming to look precisely at the issue of poverty in modern contemporary affluent Britain uh, and they're looking at it with such passion and commitment and that is very impressive too. So I think everybody who's organised this event should be pleased at the way it's developing so far. I think it's a vital focus, for me equality across you know, all of its um, manifold diversity if you like, whether that's um, social inclusion or equality in gender or race or whatever, is critical to building a better society and I think you know, that starts here. I think the real next step is businesses looking at their employee schemes and the way they're looking at their employees and looking at all the different aspects. This is a wide ranging issue. And I think it's really important that businesses recognise that, but more important that they take some real action. So having some simple actions is the key, Daniel. I think it's um, a really momentous occasion, it feels to me. You've got people here from major employers, and it's, um, uh, I think it's exciting to hear the commitment and the determination from many of these employers to actually do something about a real scandal in our country, that we've got you know, four million people uh, working and yet in poverty. Um, and so I think it's... It's important to see. It's going to be important to see how we bring together both the solutions, but also the empathy. You know, that the, to to really figure out how to work to address these issues, we've got to rework really out. You know, and understand more how people live. I'm very delighted that I've been uh, chosen to be able to have the honour of saying welcome. Um, I stand here before you as the co-founder of the Financial Inclusion Alliance alongside Norman. It's been a tremendous partner. And over the last decade, you touched on some of the challenges, but as you would have seen recently in the announcement from the Money and Advice Pension Service, this is a decade to make a difference. And with that in mind, we really wanted to make sure on the back of the World Economic Forum, which I attended last week, and we hosted a panel on gender equality, we feel our mission here today, as we talked about the power of employers to really make a difference, is what it's all about. So we've set out here, having mapped out the market, the opportunity to see the different players and how we could all work together. And the Financial Inclusion Alliance was formed as a non-for-profit to bring all these different organisations together. This summit is an opportunity, of course, to explore how together businesses can move this agenda forward. And more importantly, we've now hosted a digital platform in partnership with Hive to continue this conversation throughout the year as we move this project forward. And it was in this room where I heard Julian Richer of Richard Sounds speak with passion about why he thinks employees really are at the core of business and why he also converted his company into an employee ownership trust so that he could share some of the rewards of the success of that company more directly with his employees. And there are lots more examples of companies who are doing that. We are in a world, unfortunately, where we have to be realistic. People are taking out credit cards, they are taking out loans. We can't eradicate that tomorrow because we all know that despite the fact that a company like IKEA is a living wage uh, employer, we, we know still that they are tough times. You have to deal with this. You have to just start. Most of the best things we've done on this journey, we didn't know we'd need to do. And it's about starting and then listening to your people. 78% of those working in the United States are living paycheck to paycheck. And one of the reasons I think that's just so startling is it gets a little bit to the concept that we were talking about poverty zone, but perhaps extends it further because I think for so many people, almost regardless of your paycheck up to a certain level, you're still in a situation where you're paycheck to paycheck. So that cushion is really fundamental. The role of the Financial Inclusion Alliance has developed in our thinking over the course of the past year. What we are essentially trying to do, as I said earlier, is to connect the people who work for us with the services that are there and to use the expertise of the many people that you've seen uh, on stage so far to figure out how do we provide better solutions and how we provide support. One of the things that I would say, we're, we're sort of deep into a conversation about financial services, is that that support includes lots of other things. That support includes um, advice, so that's why we've got Stat Change here. That support might be 
how to manage your, your budget better, how to cook for less and so on. There's lots of, of different ways in which that support can manifest itself. But how do you bring all of that together as an employer to deliver a really smooth, effortless service so that this is easy? And that's really what the Financial Inclusion Alliance are trying to do. And it's membership led. It's, it's led by people like you who want to make certain things happen. That 42% of us cannot produce enough money for an emergency is mind-blowing. Right? Absolutely mind-blowing. And the reason that we've got ourselves to that stage is because there's a complete dysfunctionality in our economic system. And the reason that we've come to this dysfunctionality in our economic system is because we fundamentally misunderstand how free markets were designed to operate. I'd particularly like to thank uh, SACA for the marketing that he's just done for Legal and General's pension schemes. Uh, what you have done today is brought new and necessary, necessary focus to a really important issue, financial inclusion. The Financial Inclusion Alliance, which tomorrow's company have established with Surrey Finance and other partners, is a great and real step forward. At Legal and General, we believe in, are hugely committed to, and consistently action inclusive capitalism. It's quite hard to get a movement going, and I use the word movement, not a club, because when you create a club, people go through often a box-ticking exercise. Um, these are words from the heart. But when you go through creating a movement, which we have with the power and the influence of the people that we've brought together, not just before the summit, many people couldn't be, be here today, but also of what we intend to do going forward, you can create real systemic change.